Good afternoon, Nerd Fam, and welcome back to the Moscone Center. We're here in San Francisco, California, at Databricks Data and AI Summit. My name is Savannah Peterson here for theCUBE, joined by John Furrier. John, it is bumping in here, quite literally yeah. the music. It's like the Databricks Club. We're on the edge of the network. We're on the front lines of, we're getting all the data. We're <laughs> sucking it into our data lake here at Databricks. Uh, it's a great show, Savannah. I mean, I think this is just the beginning of the AI-centric world that's coming, and this is just the beginning of what is going to change the future of analytics, future of how AI evolves. Once the data gets set up, it's going to be fun. Our next guest is going to add a lot of value to that conversation. I am super excited to welcome our next guest, Sherrod from Click. How you doing? Good, how are you doing, Savannah? I am so good. You know, John and I had a great time at your show in Orlando. Yeah, last week, was a, it was quite a party back then. It was week. quite a party. Yeah, yeah, you exactly. all had a really good vibe going. You actually had great food at your show, which I do not say very often yes, at these yeah, conventions. Cool. Did you guys go to Universal Studio? Were you there? No? Doing we, the rides? No? We had to pop up to AWS Financial Services <laughs> oh, okay. Symposium, unfortunately. Oh, okay. However, we felt such yeah. a FOMO. We saw the dinosaur day video, oh, that was, yeah. super fun. Yeah. I have a T-Rex dress I really wanted to We wear. went to the customer thing the night before, the pool area, the, the, the reception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The loyal, you guys have great loyal customers. Yes, and, we do, and we have the best community customers. We have the best customers. Amazing. And even yeah. our partners, we have the best partners. Yeah. The best customers. Well right now, I mean, the partners want that data analytics. Like I said, we covered your show. You guys have brought agents and the answers are all there. So you guys are on the front end of the, the changing wave on the analytics side as a platform here. The data is a little bit more down in the, into the data lake, if you will, yeah, where the, the compute, lake. all the action is. This is the foundational elements of what will be next generation enterprise yeah. scale. So they're working away, selling the picks and shovels Absolutely. to the developers, yeah, exactly. using open source. Yep. Uh, what's your take on the show? Give us your read. What's your uh, assessment of the keynote and kind of what's unfolding here? Yeah, yeah, pretty exciting. The keynote was really good. I was pretty excited by it. And a couple of things which we saw coming with the acquisition of Tableau. Mm -hmm. It's really the convergence of the Delta Lake and the Iceberg format. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the last couple of years, it's kind of been divergent formats. Yeah. Right, and even though uh, Databricks has been kind of uniform, under the uniform umbrella, they say it will make the standards interwork, mm -hmm. but really the play acquiring uh, tabular, but eventually you bring the two formats into a singular format. Yeah. So now you have, everybody has an open lake house. Yeah. Open format. Yeah. So like Ali described, you can like, yeah. like a USB, you can plug in now different apps and different things onto the same lake house. So that when we saw it coming with the with the announcement last week. So that was, I was pretty jazzed by the Unity catalog open source. Yeah. That, we yeah. that we didn't see, I didn't see that coming. Yeah. So that was pretty cool because that, that thing starts to democratize governance yeah. a little bit more. People get a great tool right. to manage and control the data, their models, and govern govern them well. well. And, and everyone talks about democratizing AI. It's not democratizing AI if it's not open source, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Otherwise, it's, it's a facade of access unless people are actually in the sandbox. Yeah, with and us. I like what he said. Like, you don't want to give your data to somebody. You don't want right. to have them lock right. it up. No, he's, yes, he said, don't give it to the vendors. Yeah, so he yes. actually used the V right. word. Don't give it to the vendors. Right. And don't, we're a vendor. Don't vendor. give it to us either. Like, okay. Yeah. You don't that, see that, that very impressive. often on yeah. stage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Sharad, you gave a presentation yesterday on yes. building a trusted data foundation on Databricks. Yes. How do you do that? Can you give us a little, a uh, little synopsis of that? Yeah. So what what we talked about is look, we are in this age. We are transitioning from years we have been doing descriptive analytics and BI. Mm -hmm. Then we moved to AI. People were doing training models, but really the Gen AI wave over the last eighteen months since Chat GPT has really put this on a afterburner. Yeah. Right? So, but what we realized, in the, and I talked to a lot of CIOs and CDOs, they realized that in order to do AI and Gen AI, you need good data, right? It needs to be good quality. So what I was presenting yesterday was how you need six principles to ensure what I call goodness in your data and its fitness for AI. Mm -hmm. And those principles were around, you need to have, make sure your data is diverse because you want to capture diverse enough of data so your analytics does not have mm -hmm. bias in there. You want to make sure your data is timely, up to date, and accurate. Because you don't want to build, your, again, your chatbot on old data. Right. Your customers are interacting with your customer service agent chatbot. You want the freshest, latest data. So that means you need to constantly acquire data in real time and feed it. That's become more relevant. The third principle I talk about is that they need to be good quality and accurate because your predictions are not going to be accurate if your data is of poor quality. Then we talked about how to, you need to secure the data, privacy in the data, because we're talking about a lot of AI systems work on sensitive information, information that's proprietary to companies, and it's a big danger of that getting leaked through the algorithm. 
right? I feel like it's I get a, a notification every other day for a big data lake. Yeah. Risk for companies building that. So that was my fourth principle. The fifth principle was that data needs to be relevant, contextual, and findable. Because if you, let's say, put data there, nobody can understand what it means. How do I use it in the right context? And then my last principle was it was in a form that can be consumed by Gen AI applications. That means you need to take the data and apply new things, like you've got to create embeddings, you've got to vectorize the data, put it into a vector store, like what Databricks G8, right? So it's consumable by these RAG and LLM driven applications. So I was generally talking about yeah. how you need these six principles to really create a good foundation, right, and a trusted foundation of data on is, top of data breaks. So is there any kind of limitations, or I almost say limitate, bad me, bad word, or segmentation around scope of when something gets too big, or when do you have to make it bigger? How, like, because sometimes in the medium-sized enterprise, it might be okay to have one solution, but if, as you grow with your data needs, it might be bigger. Is there a, how do you think about that as building a foundation? Do you build it too big, is it too small? I mean, what's yeah. the scale, scope this out for us? Yeah, so, so what kind of I advise customers when I talk to them is, look, you cannot boil the ocean. You cannot take your entire data set and say, okay, I'm going to apply these six principles to my entire data set. It's a big problem to solve. So just like us, human being, we break problems into smaller. So my advice is, let's say, if you look at a domain, and typically, when we talk about Gen AI, chatbots, people talk about in specific domains. So let's say you talk, apply it to customer service. So let's look at the data for the customer service domain, and can we apply these six principles to that domain of data? Right. To cleanse it, make it accurate, make it timely, so we can start to build more. So you approach it that way, approach it domain by domain, business function by business function, as you build it out. So kind of have a road map there to break yeah. the problem into more manageable. So Ali was on stage, we laid, at the beginning of his keynote, he's laying out kind of like, oh yeah, AI's in demand, obviously the lakes are growing. But he said privacy and, and security is yes. a big problem. And then the third area was the fragmentation of the data estate, yes. as he called it. Yeah. What is the factors to, to consider when I'm dealing with this fragmented, basically silos, yeah. and old. So you got legacy, old, yeah. and then the classic silos, or, or stovepipes, as Dave calls them. How do you get around that? How do you work around that? Do you just rip and replace? Is it a do-over? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so a couple of things. So one, if you look from a, just purely from a data platform perspective, that consolidation has sort of been going on. People use, if I look at customers, they used to have multiple databases in mainframe, DB2, Oracle, <laughs> SQL Server. Now they're beginning to bring the data into, let's say, a lake house. So that's the first step where you create a unified storage place. You bring all your data together in one place because you can do multiple type of use cases from a single or unified yeah, platform. Yeah. So that's, but I think what I see is still from a data integration management perspective. So he put the picture up with their ecosystem, right? And we are one of the ecosystem partners. Mm -hmm. So if you look at that, so Databricks has a great, diverse, thriving and growing ecosystem of partners. But that means if I'm a customer, if I'm building an end-to-end -end platform around Databricks, often you have to pick a different tool to ingest the data, different tool to transform the data, something else to secure the data, something else to do BI. Right. And there's a little plug from Click here, right? We are one of the few companies who cover and check out multiple boxes in that ecosystem. Because we are building kind of a unified, integrated platform that allows customers to move, transform, and govern the data through the same platform. So that means less point solutions to buy, simplified architecture, less complexity in integration, and faster time to value. Less headaches and quicker innovation is quicker what I'm hearing. Uh, yeah, exactly. Because it's a big, I mean look, in the past life I was a practitioner. I worked in consulting, helping my customers implement these things. That's a big headache taking five of six of these and trying to package exactly. and put it together, make them work. Yuck, and together. they're all different UIs, it's all, all different. different UIs, yeah. and some of the models don't work together. Yeah. Five different procurement, they all move at a different pace. Yeah, so, so much for user experience. User experience, yeah, exactly. It's interesting, you know, Lake Flow is announced, okay, obviously that's like, like what Fivetran does, right? So, okay, where in the ecosystem is it safe, in your mind, and where is Databricks going to take their own territory? Because at some point, they got to start building their own. And will they do that in conjunction with the ecosystem? So how's the ecosystem partner? How do you look at where it's safe to plant your flag on the ecosystem yeah. and, and do business? 
Look, every time as an ecosystem, when I look at any of the large vendors like Databricks, they're always going to have capability which look and feel that they overlap or they're competitive to us. But the way I look at it is, look like flow. It'll be good for bringing certain kind of data, but if you look at what Click does, that's a bread and butter. We can connect to complex sources like SAP and mainframe, right? Relational yeah. database. We have 200 plus sources, SaaS application that we can connect. So when we look at Databricks as a company, they're not going to build that. Their core bread and butter is building out the Lakehouse platform, which and and, and the Mosaic AI pieces of it. Yes, they acquired RCN, which formed the basis mm. of a lot of that. But I think as a specialized partner which does data movement and data transform, we are not kind of worried from that perspective that that's a competitive to us. But I can see the point, they need to make it easier yeah. for their customers to bring in data, which is what do we do for them. Right. It's really help our customers yeah. hydrate their lake house much, much easily and much, much quicker from this diverse set of sources that they have. How right. long have you been partners with Databricks? I would say multiple years. We have a great thriving partnership. Last year, we got the Data Integration Partner of the Year Award. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Love we to have, see we have 300 it. plus partners and growing, customers, sorry, and growing. So, so, so we have a good, very strong partnership. All our data analytics uh, software portfolio support a lot of the deep data bricks capability. We work with their engineering staff to make sure we are leveraging a lot of the new capabilities. So our engineering right now is working on leveraging the DBRX, which is their LLM and their vector store. So we're integrating into all of those to make that available for our customers. That's awesome. Are there any of those 300 customers that you have together that you're allowed to share with us, are there any examples or solutions that you're particularly excited by or proud of? Yeah, so a couple of them. I think one, one customer was JB Hunt, where we worked together. So we actually brought in a lot of mainframe mm -hmm. data for them out of their mainframe as well as SQL servers. And a lot of the customers, they're driven by timely access to data. Other example we're very proud of is Mercedes-Benz. So they have this program where they want to improve their overall equ equipment efficiency. So mm -hmm. they want to bring data from all their plants together in, in, into one place, and they were lacking real-time access to SAP data. Right. And so, so they selected Data Breaks, Lake House. So we were able to bring that SAP data in real-time, deliver it, so they can start to make real-time decisions and build their models on the lake house. And their customer that we are proud of, and we're actually giving out a bike there, which is Trex. Hey, right? yeah. we saw the bikes on the floor you in Orlando. Bike, yeah, Orlando, yeah, yeah. So we have it one here as well. So, so that's I want a, the bike. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta, <laughs> gotta get over there. Gotta get scanned. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's another great customer where we pull data from their 400 or 500 stores globally. So they can perform, have real-time view into the stores and do analytics on the same store analytics. So just a couple of examples of great customers we have jointly. Just just a couple of examples, just a couple of brand names people have probably yeah. heard about. Yeah. yeah, that was yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What's your take on the whole development side of this? Because one of the things we're seeing is a lot more developers want to program with data, not as just use data in the app as a database call or whatever. You're starting to see the data quality of generative AI, that's a trend. Is it ready yet? Are apps going to truly have data and code kind of integrating together? Uh, or are we still in the early days of setting the foundational layer down? Or what's your vision? Because LLMs are already starting to talk, talk to each other. Yeah, yeah. You're starting to see the data interaction is happening. Yeah. So, so just like I think we talked about, a lot of experimentation going on, obviously, which is great. Yeah. And I love the thing, what he said, just get started. And we had that same theme, I think, last week in Orlando. Jensen said that. Right? On yeah. stage today. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, so let's get started. So we see a lot of experimentation, but I think what's going to be very critical to move from experimentation to truly getting value is, that's what we talked about, is that you have to have that trusted foundation. So I can build a little experiment, experiment in my silo, data is not secure, data is not good quality, I can try out stuff, is good. But if I have to put it out there, if I have to put that bot as a customer service agent bot, I need to make sure all those principles they talked about it here. So I think, so, so customers are beginning to realize it, that, that if they don't get the foundation right, it's going to set them back. Absolutely. They're going to do a lot of experiment which look good, they'll say, okay, I need to put it into production. Now they're going to turn back and say, oh no, my data is not right, it's not secure, it's not good quality. So some of the customers I talk to now yeah. learn from this and they're beginning to focus on the data yeah. foundation while they continue to experiment 
Oh, I mean, everyone yeah. evolves. Look at Databricks, they went from Spark, you know, and now they keep jumping to that next lily pad. Yes. Because the market's getting bigger and they just go with the customers. And yeah. you know, you're seeing a lot more um, blocking and tackling enterprise stuff. Yeah. Privacy, security, yeah. <laughs> complex states, data states, figure those things out. It feels like we're like, still got a lot more work to do on the infrastructure side yeah. with the data engineering. Yeah, and I think what the good part, if you look in the last 18 months, has changed, right? So earlier when I talked to customers, everybody was challenged with building their own models, right? I mean, you need data science experience, you need enough data to train those models. Now a lot of customers we talk to, they're using this thing called RAG, right? Which you don't need, you can use off the shelf model, yeah. but really feed your data, right, yeah. to the model. Right. Right, at the, at, the, at the right time to get the inference. So I don't need, so now it has turned the focus to, I need application developers who can build these applications, yeah. Python based application, and then integrate it with their entire enterprise corpus. So there's kind of broad yeah. use of AI, yeah. a little more mainstream yeah. than people who only needed data scientists, which is a specialized well, area. Well, you guys, right? on your show last week, you guys talked a lot about agents. Here, co-pilots, the buzzword, agents, co-pilots, same thing. Yeah. That will be basically the data plumber. Co-pilots will be managing these calls. But there seems to be an emphasis, Savannah, remember when we were at KubeCon two years ago, platform engineering, and we mm -hmm. introduced the data engineering connection. So cloud native next level is happening with data engineering, but it's highly acute when you think about AI, because that, if you don't lock in and engineer that platform, yeah. you're going to be screwed, because things yeah. will break. On top, you can't enable anything. It just so won't work. It won't yeah, work. It won't yeah. work. Yeah. yeah, it just doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. All right, this has been fascinating, we're obviously big tech fans. I have a question I'd love to know. We'll probably see you along the way at many shows between yes. now and then, but Sharad, what do you hope to be able to say the next time we see you at Databricks a year from now that yep. you can't currently say today? That you can't, sorry? That you can't say yet today. Uh, Where are we going to be in a year? I, I think you will see a lot more customer success stories around use of Gen AI. Mm -hmm. right, because right now, if you look at still, our show was there, customers still talking about plain old analytics, right? I still go to a lot of shows, and you, you said, we're still lacking customers, so I think one year from now, we're going to see a lot more customer stories who have built Gen AI applications and truly seeing value from data. I think that's what I expect to see in a year back, when you're back. Is there a use case that excites you most personally? I, I think I think number of them, I feel a couple of areas are very important, which I feel, one is supply chain. Mm -hmm. I feel there's a lot of Huge. potential there, and obviously around customer service. I feel as I talk to customers, I think that's pretty exciting. And actually some of the simplest one I would put out there which can be done before that is internally facing. So if you look at product, I talk to product and product yeah. manuals, training manuals, because there the risk is a little less. Your agents are internal facing, mm -hmm. right? As opposed to a customer service bot, which is out there now exposed to your millions of customers, you can't afford to take the risk. But taking internal product manuals, which don't have privacy information in there, yeah. converting them into utility tools. I'm, I'm a technician on the floor. I want to learn how to do this. Now instead of a thousand page manual, I can very quickly chat and get the gist out. Knowledge graph's going to be huge. huge. So I think to me, yep. those applications are probably low, lowest hanging fruit that people will realize that they're the quickest ones to do and have less risk in them than well, customer facing. Well, we look forward to discussing the adoption of them at scale with you yeah. next time here. John, fabulous time as always. Yeah. Try from Click, we'll see you again next time you, down in, a, wait, where's the next Click Connect? Where are we going to do? You know I yet? I don't know. I don't know yet, actually. No, we and I was. I'm, I'm still recovering from the last one, <laughs> so I'm not thinking. <laughs> but we're still celebrating what a great time yes. we had in Orlando. Yes. More yes. importantly, thank you all for tuning in. We're here in San Francisco at Databricks Data and AI Summit. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching the Cube, the leading source for enterprise tech news.